The Small Business Show, episode 375 for Wednesday, April 13th, 2022. Welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the place where we are small businessing every week. Sponsors for this episode include Shopify at shopify.com slash SBS, where you can get your 14-day free trial with full access to all their features and everything. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes in the middle of the show here. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How goes it out there, man? Oh, it goes. You know, it goes. I have a, I, I, I have a thing. That I've been thinking about. Um, okay. I was in the car with a friend uh, last week. doesn't matter. Prior to this moment, which is sort of how temporal, you know, the, the, the linear time works. And because uh, I don't have experiences for the future quite yet. But um, I, he was, you know, I was telling him about my podcast that I do. And, and I mentioned this one. He's like, well, I don't know about that one. And I'm like, oh, yeah. He's like, well, I, I want to listen to that. I'm like, great. It's called The Small Business Show. And it took all of about three minutes, which is a long time for him to find our small business show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, there was that. And then yeah, I started sure. thinking, what is this? And I'm sure that thought catalyzed my next one, but they, they, it was not a, like, it wasn't immediate that I started thinking about this. It was like shower inspiration. I started thinking, you know, is our show about small business or more specifically is our show about the, 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 the path, the long path to overnight success, right? Because we, we and, and, and then I started thinking, well, we say, you know, overnight success takes 20 years. So is there a, first of all, the question is, is there a better name for our show for a variety of reasons? A one that's more specifically descriptive. We are the small yes. business show. That's not incorrect, but we could be the riches are in the niches, right? So yeah. we could be more specifically descriptive. And then I, and so I was riffing on this idea of, you know, the, the, the 20 year overnight success, right? Like, is that okay. a good name for a show? I actually went and, and bought a domain just cause I, that's, you know, that's how I am. It, oh, I do like, that all the time. Right. <laughs> right. So I, I bought 20 years overnight.com both with two zero and with the word 20. We don't have to use that. That That's just my yeah. way of processing and, and doing things. But I, I don't know. I, I, like, I, I think there is a better name for this show. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I may have stumbled onto it. I may not have. I don't know. You know, but I, I, yeah. Well, when we started, we, we called it the small business podcast, right? No, we called it DBA. Call it? Oh, DBA. That's right. No, but it was DBA. The small business podcast. Yes. The small business podcast. Yeah. That's DBA right. doing business as right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. 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 yeah I thought yeah, that yeah. was kind of catchy, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, definitely open it, it open to, to new things and uh, new ideas. And I do agree with you uh, 100% that it's a pretty broad name and there's um, like 15 small business show podcasts yes too. there is yes, so there is. yeah and and i also think a lot of the uh the techniques tips and tactics oh, that's three t's uh mm. they are you know good in your life and not just your small business yes I agree with and, this. Right. A lot of the stuff that we talk yes. about certainly helps us in our, our businesses and has helped us, which is part of why we share it. But it is it is like life hacks as well. Yeah, as it just is a life business. hack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, you but know, it is all about I, the grind. Like it's it's not yes. instant success. Right. No, so, no, not. Yeah. We'd never say that. Right. No, no. We, we always focus on the long term and, you know, right. Like so we we're talking about for the show, you know, creating yeah. writing your story, deciding what that is. And yeah. Then, Working that backwards, um, I, I, I'm definitely uh, think about I, this. I, I, I yeah, I, I do want to think about it because I'm open to it. I think it's uh, something new and exciting. Yeah. Um, we just have to see how because we're coming up on our 400th show. It's true, 25 shows to go. So half a year. We got we got six months before yeah, we get there. But months. yeah, so but yeah, so it could be that you know definitely. Uh, time for a change we keep changing new things i mean we're doing a lot of great things we've got tons of new members in the small business support group yep um each week now and uh trying to build up that experience tons of new followers on linkedin that are listening to the mini shows and mini episodes are really popular you know five minutes here whatever it is um uh, so yeah i i'm i'm definitely open to it i don't have a, a 
brainstorm concept in my head right now. Yeah. But I think we yeah, should. Yeah, no, I, I just, I wanted to start something. the process. I didn't expect us to I like, like to, you know, solidify anything here by any stretch. But I, I, I think it's, I think we need to evolve the, the name of the yes. show to brand it to the people that, that would not understand what it's about based just on the name. So, yeah. 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 I think that's a great idea. So I know we're going to talk about transparency today, Shannon. I have yeah. an experience that uh, is either going well. It is a a a teachable moment. It is a tuitionable moment. <laughs> we always say that you know mistakes are our we we consider mistakes are our tuition because it's how we learn, and it's also how we justify paying for them. So we're doing a project, several projects in our in. in Outside our house right now, the, the the main ones that are relevant to this story are that we're putting in a, a propane generator, like a full house generator. Nice. And yeah. we're putting in a patio. Uh, we realized we had to dig a, dig a trench to get from where our propane tanks are to where the generator is. And it that trench is easy path will go under where our patio is. So I decided, well, if I know that there's going to be propane under my patio, I'm definitely putting in a fire pit, right? So like all this stuff there is happening. Yeah, right. that's so, not, yeah, great. But coordinating the timing on everything is, is, is a trick. And my wife has been the master conductor of all of this stuff. And really, it, it's been amazing. We had the guy here yesterday doing the trench. Okay, great. So, and there's lots of boulders to move. You know, he's, he's doing this mm. thing. He told us it was going to cost 1400 bucks, which it did. And it's totally fine. So he, <laughs> this is relevant to the story. Uh, he's about halfway through with this thing and he comes and, and gets me and says, yeah, I, uh, cause my wife wasn't home. He says, I, I hit a line to the generator that was underground. I'm like, God, oh, there's no lines to the generator underground, man, but uh, uh -oh. let's go take a look. Yeah. yeah so yeah. he didn't hit a line to the generator, but he did hit a line. Uh, it was a piece of conduit that held the electrical lines to our air conditioner unit. You know, the part, the part that sits outside. I see. And I'm like, okay, you guys, do you have call before you dig out there? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. We do. He Just didn't check with that. He didn't. Yeah. Call before you dig is a service that, that will come and tell you what you're about to dig through. If you're going to do this. And, and one would assume that most, People who are in the business of digging trenches would call before they dig because otherwise that number on speed th dial. Yeah, they run into these problems. So he's like, yeah, I just didn't think we were going to run into anything. I'm like, OK, well, this one, I mean, this I, I'm going to need an electrician out to to like re deal with this. But it's not the end of the world. Fine. You know, bad to, that it happened. But whatever. We move forward. And I said, OK, but, you know, without having called call before you dig. You know where my septic line is, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be a problem. Uh -oh. Okay, it's right there, just so you know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be deep. It's it's not a problem. I'm like, okay, it's right there. Great. Twenty minutes later, I get it. My wife is now home. I get a text from my wife. He hit the septic. Oh my god! I'm like, okay. So I write her back. I'm like, does this mean that we have uh, that we cannot like run any water in the house? And I get a one word answer from her. Correct. Okay. Oh, right. That's brutal. Yep. Like, that's transparent. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, and 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 she said he was super apologetic, accepted oh, sure. blame. You know, said, "Look, let me know what it's going to cost. If uh, it, you know, if I have to file it through my insurance, I will. All of this good stuff. Okay. So fine. Called the septic people. My wife did. They were here in thirty minutes. Right. That's so, impressive. Emergency service. They were here. These guys showed up. They couldn't have been more relaxed, more cordial. Uh, they're the people that pump our septic every couple of years when you're supposed to have that done. And uh, but they were like super chill and they were like, oh, yeah, it's no problem. You know, and, and they'd look at it and they're like, oh, this is actually the, the like best case scenario for you. I'm like, OK, awesome. They were here 20 minutes and fixed it. Wow. As the guys were leaving, I asked him, I said, well, I know we're paying an emergency service fee and all that stuff. Just out of curiosity, what's the price? 1500 Okay, fine. Like, whatever. I need a septic. Yeah. Like, you That's know, pretty reasonable. How, yeah. how it goes. Okay, great. Thank you. Like, still thanking them. Like, okay, great. So my wife calls the, uh, the trench digger who wanted to know what the price was going to be. And she tells him 1500 And she hears him talk, like, you know, kind of calculating and thinking out loud under his breath and... One of the things he said is, oh, wow, well, geez, man, I got to make some money for today. Okay. How about uh, four, I give you 400 bucks? Oh, and you can see my face right now. <laughs> I, like, I don't understand what I, 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 
I need to have this conversation with him face to face because I, I just yeah. need to say, cause, and then the, 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 to get the electrical thing fixed is going to be another three or 400 bucks, like all in, you know, cause that's how these things go. Yeah, he's not going to make any money on this job. That's just the way it works. He's going to be upside down on it. Right. Yeah. It, and, but I like, I don't understand how the amount that he's like, who's supposed to pick up the slack then? Like, I, I like the implication is. We are right. Like me and yes, me and my wife are supposed to pick up the slack on this. So I just want to have the conversation with him face to face and say it out loud. Like, OK, are you saying yeah. that there's a mistake that was made here? We you made the mistakes and you should pay the lion's share of and, that. Of and I'm paying the for these. Like, I don't. Yeah. Is that what we're saying? Because if it is like if he came to us and said, look, things have been tough, you know, yeah. whatever, I, I will work with him. And, you know. Yeah. We know we're doing this project. It's a fairly sizable project. We know that there are going to be surprises that cost us more than we predicted. It's just how these things go. If we wind up paying for this in the end, it's going to be okay. Like, I'm not going to be bitter about it. But I'm just flabbergasted that someone's mentality would be, well, I still got to make money on this. Well, from a from thinking about it from a business standpoint, you know, that. It's just one of the worst ways yeah. to handle a problem. You know, you're you're not going to, we always talk about getting the customer on your side. This mm -hmm. is the first thing, right? Yeah, whatever you say, phrasing, how you do it, two tokens, that's certainly, you know, he grabbed the yeah. wrong token. He grabbed, yeah, <laughs> right. Sure. He grabbed, the, he uh, should be like, oh my God, this is terrible. Can I bring a check yeah. over now? Like, Let me figure it out. Well, even like you, to your point, if he didn't have the money, so he, that's a different conversation. If he says, that's, wow. But that's okay. Let, I, I'm going to have to figure this out with you. I don't have the cash or the things have been so tight, but I, but I, the first thing I want you to know is I'm going to make this right. Right? Yeah, I mean that, that's what he should have said. Then you would have been like, "Oh, okay, we're going to get it figured out." Even if the guy paid you a hundred bucks a month for fifteen months, you got <laughs> you know it. what I mean? Yeah, and and so that's what he's missing. There is there there is a way to salvage it, no matter what. Yeah, and if you panic and just revert to this kind of. Uh, uh, how about, you know, 400 bucks? How about you, you pay the bulk of it and I pay, you know, uh, some token? 20, yeah. 20%. <laughs> I mean, that, that doesn't make that, that, that doesn't endear you to your customers. No, it does not endear me. So I, it was an interesting, you know, it's, it's, it's what's happening. We talk about our lives here on the show, but I, always, I also thought, you know, with, with our uh, upcoming topic here in, in a couple of minutes on transparency, I thought this would be a, uh, an interesting thing to share. So yes, I'm, yes. I'm really curious to see how this evolves. I, you know, the, it, this guy was brought into the project by the, the, the guy who's actually building our patio and so what I all, what I do know is that w when he screwed up the first thing, when he hit the, you know, the electrical line, the patio guy was like materialized here very, very quickly and was aware and like, you know, very concerned about this. So even if we wind up eating this 1500 bucks for the thing, as long as the guy building the patio knows that we have, he's going to go above and beyond for us on this patio. He's not going to cut any corner. You know, he's, he's yeah, going to, yeah. he's going to make sure that like, if if there's one bad thing that happened, it's only that and everything else is going to be so good that we forget about it. And so like there there is a there is an angle to play here that does yes. that does not include the irate customer. Right. Like, oh, yeah. No, you don't get anything done that way. I no, because then they don't, they don't want to work. Then they don't want to work for me. Right? Motivated to do it right. And Correct. I, I agree 100 percent. So, you know, if, if an extra fifteen hundred bucks on this project is the key to unlocking the best work this guy does all summer. You know what? That, you know, in the end, that's uh, probably actually worth it. But, you know, hopefully yeah. they don't listen to this episode before I have the conversation yes. with them. <laughs> yeah. Hey, wh one quick thing. You know, the best way to get people to find uh, the small business show, at least an Apple podcast, is just have them search for your name. Yes. You know, I always tell people, search for Shannon Jean. It comes up quickly. Yeah. Uh, search for Dave Hamilton, you know, that kind of thing. No, you're totally right. That's finally, that's how I had... John find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I, I do. Yeah. So we're going to, we'll revisit that naming uh, topic and come up with something awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, before we get to the transparency thing, the next thing that I want to do well is this because that sound makes me smile. That is the sound of another sale on Shopify, the all in one commerce platform to run, start, and grow your business. And so Shopify is this platform that's designed for anyone to sell anywhere, 
giving people who are small businessing like you and me the resources once reserved for big business all customized for our needs with a great looking online store that can bring your ideas to life and tools that let you manage your day to day and drive sales. Making your idea real opens endless possibilities and it's a journey, right? Like that's how small businessing is, but that's the beauty of exactly what we do and why we do it. And Shannon, you and me, we have both used uh, Shopify in the past. It's a fantastic platform. They really They've they've solved all of the problems that we would need to solve and just let us do the things that we need to do. And that's why, in addition to us, Shannon, Shopify powers millions of entrepreneurs from first sale to full scale. Every 28 seconds, a small business owner makes their first sale on Shopify. So you can get started by building and customizing your online store you, need, you don't need any coding or design experience. You get to access powerful tools to help you find customers, drive sales, and manage your day-to-day, plus 24-7 support, which means you're never alone. So you're going to go to shopify.com slash SBS, that's all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial to get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash SBS right now. Shopify.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. And now, Shannon, it is time to talk more about transparency and how we can apply it to our businesses. Yeah, I think it, I think it's a, a fascinating topic and I, I will be transparent. I often struggle with it because uh, I'm, I'm like a defiant optimist and Sometimes it kind of bites me in the in the butt because I don't like to talk about problems and I have to force myself to be more transparent about it. So I'm going to get some uh, business therapy with this topic today, too. Yeah, no, you're you're not alone. Uh, I am the same way. I I avoid talking about problems at times when it's like, oh, I'll just will my way through this. Right. You know, and, and even if you're going to will your way through it acknowledging the problem, especially when there's other people involved is key. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's right. Cause for myself, I just power through it and keep focusing and grind it out. And I always overcome them. But it, when you have other people around you, that doesn't work as well. Um, so we're going to, we're going to discuss that today and talk about how transparency, uh, it really should be part of your company culture as it relates to some different demographics, your customers, okay. your employees, your suppliers and your partners and advisors, they all benefit and you ultimately would benefit, but uh, they all benefit from transparency. And in some ways they just won't exist without having, having that, uh, that transparency. And I think the first place to start is with your employees, because without a really good team of people that trust you and that you have credibility with, um, you, you got nothing. It's going to work, right? Yeah. You no. It, 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 yeah. Transparency builds trust. I mean, it. You know, my example earlier is it would be a key for that. Like the fact that the guy told us that he he broke the electric That's and the good. septic. Like, it's I mean, there's that. You know. Yeah. yeah. And he 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 Absolutely. at least uh, morally owned up to it. Yes. That's <laughs> nice. Yeah. Honest. That's Which great. is good. That's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And and the thing I realized as I was putting together my notes is that you know creating this transparent culture that's built on honesty, accountability, you know, respect, all that stuff. It's one of the most valuable benefits that you can give to your employees mm. and it costs you nothing. That's there's, really there's no, interesting. Yeah. There's no cost associated with it. It's a mindset that allows you to do all kinds of things that you, you wouldn't be able to do if you don't have it. And so and, and kind of about my earlier comment, being transparent, like about your, the strengths and weaknesses of your company, it really makes you a more credible leader and people will follow you, it, right? Because they know, oh, this guy's not just BSing us and how great everything's going to be and um, things are going to be hard. It, but, and when you talk about those weaknesses, it helps focus people on how they can fix. So it's just a natural thing. Well, let me yeah. tell you where we're what we're good at, but I'll also talk about areas that we really need to, to work on. And you just, most people just snap, I just snapped my fingers there. Most people just <laughs> snap like, boom, oh, I, I'm going to start thinking about how I can help solve this problem because everybody wants to help, right? Yeah. As um, soon as you tell someone you have a problem, our natural inclination as humans 
other than the sociopaths out there. And, and bless yeah. your heart, you folks. Like you, 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 you in, in many ways, you have it easier. You just get to plow through and you don't worry about well, anybody else. That or you're a politician. So, you know, I think it's, <laughs> is there a difference? I think that's potato, potato. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. But, it, but I mean, it, but like, you know, most people, when they hear someone say, I need help or I am not good at this or, you know, that little bit of humility opens a door that actually yes, lets really people help you. Right. If you yeah. if you act like, oh, I don't need help. I can do it all on my own. People will believe you like, <laughs> you oh, yeah. know, they it, see the vulnerability. Right. And they yeah. want to. Most people want to help, especially your employees, too. You yes. Know? And so you become a different kind of leader. Of course. I can't remember. I can't remember the guy's name, but I heard him at a PayPal event. The guy's on CNBC on the profit. Uh, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, but it, one of his his lesson was that the most important thing in business is vulnerability. Mm. And that's how you make the connection and get people to follow you and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, everybody wants to be part of something good, right? Yes. We all do. Where you're working and, and you can make it something bigger. You know, we used to say tech restore, you know, hey, we're changing the world one repair at a time. And and people kind of make fun of me when I'd say that. And I said, no, let me tell you some experiences that yeah. these students have and parents that can't afford and this and that. You could just kind of extrapolate it out. But all of us want to be part of something good and and. Being transparent is a great way to get there um, and, and talking about your strengths and weaknesses. You know, I think it's just a, just a great thing to have, you know, another big part of being transparency, I think or transparent is managing expectations. And I've made this mistake many, many times. I, I talk in these big, you know, we're going to do this and we're yeah. going to do that. And in my mind, it's like, well, yeah, we're, we're, Sure, we want to do this. We want to do that. But in reality, there's some one of your employees is in the corner writing it down. Oh, you know, Shannon said we're gonna going to do this. So you need to be careful, and it's part of being transparent is don't say things that may not happen. Because mm -hmm. your employees, they really have long memories. You could say, We would like to do this, and if we hit some benchmarks, we can do this. Just make sure you follow through. Uh, and, and be transparent about the unknowns about, yes. you know, man, we're going to have th this going to be really hard. <laughs> you, know, you need to tell them that I will. I will caution you to look for the red flag of the employee who, you know, a, a year down the road, two years down the road oh, yeah. will say, well, you know, you said and they won't put a time frame on it. And, and, I, and it's not a tactic generally. It is how their brains work. I've encountered people like this. I've had business partners like this. Like that'll say, and I've had somebody like 10 years later say, well, you told me once that you, you would never do things that way. Or, you know, you don't do things that way. Maybe we'll take the word never out of it. You know, yeah. you told me you don't do things that way. It's like, well, things change. And, and so my, my caution is look for those red flags of someone that is incapable of, or, or has a difficulty processing change we all do right like we're all change resistant that's normal but if you've got somebody that just hangs on to oh we can't do this new thing because you know weeks months years ago you said we don't do it that way be be aware of that because that can become a boat anchor on your business if you've got somebody internal that's that's even if you're being transparent with them like it's it's not always your fault what do you do about it what do you do about that? You got to let them go. I've had that kind of yeah. You, you got to let them go. Person in every business I've had at some point. At some point, you know, yeah. I mean, if it happens yeah. once, you know, the first time yeah. it happens, I explain to them, well, things change, and and I don't, I don't hang on to, you know, ideals from, you know, or or things that worked in the past almost certainly won't work in the future, and I will tell them, look, you know that. That is one change that from whenever then was, you know, months, weeks, years ago, that change will happen because we're because of different circumstances and what we are doing now will also change as time marches on. And if yeah. they have trouble with that, I've found, I don't have a way of, of, of successfully dealing with them um, other than being totally dismissive, which is generally how I wind up dealing with those people. And I know that's the wrong thing to do by the way, but it, it, at some point it's like, okay, well, you know, you keep doing this. I'm going to stop acknowledging right. you. And, and that's, you know, I mean, yeah, you got to get, get this person out of there. Yeah. 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 Exactly. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, the, I think the other part of that we often overlook as business owners is, is that when you have this transparent culture and your employees feel good about it, they treat your customers better. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and that their engagements are usually more positive because they really like where they work and they believe in it. And they know that you're honest, that you're not, you know, uh, yeah. th- that people aren't getting taken advantage of or whatever it is. But, and, and that drives growth and profits because you just, you're all kind of, you know, uh, leaning into this together and headed in the same direction. Um, you know, it, it, it really works. You yeah. want people to feel like that. Um, and then lastly, on the employee front, this is where I've made, I've made some missteps as well, is having a clear, transparent ad- path, you know, a career development, how to advance how to make more money, how, how, how you increase your salary here. So they know what that path it, it is. It removes uncertainty and it gives them a direction to focus on. But of course, if you say you're going to do so, you have to follow through with it. If you tell them, look, if we meet these goals or uh, yeah. you know, the, this benchmark, then you got to, you have to reward them. But um, I don't want to derail this episode any more than I already have, uh, yes. but I, but I will. I want to, I'm putting that, particular concept uh, on our list to expand and probably turn okay. into a segment because I, 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 I certainly want to get better at that. And yeah. I know our listeners do too. So I, I let's talk through that more sure. in depth it, at, at some point. Yeah, we've, we've yeah. t- 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 I know. done it before a little bit before, but it, it could certainly uh, deserve a deeper dive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All this stuff is. So yeah. Um, and Hey, if you it, folks hear us say, I mean, I have the benefit when it's, you know, a topic that Shannon is leading, I have the benefit of being listener zero. Right. And and so I get to say, hey, let's let's, you know, do that another time. If you're listening, you don't have to be listener zero to do that. This is a privilege afforded to every single listener, not just me and not just Shannon. You get to do this too. feedback at business show dot co. Let us know if there's something you want us to talk more about. We will do it. Yeah, or correct us. Yeah, or well, that offer too. Another yeah. another take on it. That's yeah. really important. We've been getting some great emails lately. About yeah. That. Um, okay, so we we talked about customers. I'm sorry, we talked about employees. Let's talk about customers, right? Okay, that's the other side. Sure. You know, customers they want to interact with honest companies that they know they can rely on, right? Uh, and now, especially, it seems like more these days, they want to deal with companies they like believe in. Yeah. You know, uh, and while I'm not fully on board with this whole. I think a lot of it's performative and uh, uh, virtue signaling with some companies, how good we are, kind of stuff. In general, sure. Sure. they people do want to you know work with companies that they believe in. Yeah. Um, and and I think your policies towards those customers need to be transparent. Uh, and I I can't reiterate this enough. They need to be short. If you bury yourself, you think you're going to protect yourself with this, you know. 10 page terms and conditions, you got another thing coming. If if you're defending your actions all the time and using your terms and conditions as a shield, you've lost already. That's a bad sign. Yeah. Yeah, You've lost already. So keep those policies really short and open. Uh, That's how you gain the trust of, of potential customers. Right. Yep. Um, Something I was reading a lot about as I was prepping for the show was, you know, upfront and transparent pricing. Uh, and oh. talk about, you know, n- not not breaking everything down. Like, you know, there's this, there's an a la carte where you can add on certain things, but, you know, sometimes it gets crazy, right? Where you're thinking they advertise, oh, that's only, you know, $89. And then by the time you're done getting it to where it actually would work, you've spent $200, right? We, that, we have a phrase in my house, which spills very much over into business, which is one number. What, what I want from you <laughs> is one that's number. Hilarious. Right. That's All, a good parent tip. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want one number, you know, and it's like, yeah, oh, it's going to be yeah. this and this and this. And and it's, you know, one number. I don't yeah. want the nickel and diming. If, yeah. You know, well, and at your kids or whatever, because that's how I'm thinking of this. They lead you down the road. Oh, it's only this. Dad. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, and I have to do this. Oh, and I need to buy a pair of shoes because I have to wear this. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. We never. We, uh, well, our kids never had the opportunity to to play that game because they learned the one number one concept number. early on. You know, that's brilliant. Right. Like it's I, love it. I want one yeah. when we're going on vacation, you know, oh, we're like, you know, when we did cruises, when we were when the kids were younger, it was like, OK, I want one number, you know, and, and we added all up. 
tactic right there. Yeah, we would add it all up, and it's like, okay, we've added all their a la carte things. Now, here's the number. Let's look at yeah. that, not the the you know the number that's sixty percent of that that they yeah, use to advertise. Yeah. I want that from the friggin' airlines too, right? They should do the same thing. Yeah, you should One do the number. same thing with your customer. Yeah, yeah for your customer. One side, number. So. Yeah. Yep. The other part of transparency with your customers, I think, is important. Is not promising what you can't do. Being really clear and transparent at what you can and can't do for people. Right. That helps to. It really helps to avoid all kinds of problems. And managing expectations of your customers, just like you want to do it, you know, to your employees. I mean, your business can't be all things to all people, right? You'll never success. You'll never make it. We always talk about the riches are in the niches. You you need to focus on a specific customer base that you can service and whatever products and services that you can offer uh, and be the best at. You cannot, uh, you know, can't make promises. Lastly, when you make a mistake... You know, we talk about the two tokens concept. It, it, go look it up at businessshow.co. Um, you need to admit it and focus on solving the problem for the customer. Even if it seems like a massive disaster, you need to get it across to them quickly. Hey, we're going to make this right. You know, you, I don't know how we're going to solve it yet, but the first thing you need to know is we stand behind everything we've done, Yeah, yada, yada. Um, they want to have their problem solved quickly and they, and they don't want to be hassled through it. And if you can do that... Those are your best customers. They are the most loyal customer. They will tell everybody about it. It's, I don't know, there's some, I, I've seen a number of studies that a customer that had a problem that was solved quickly, it, it becomes just far more loyal than just a customer that bought something and everything worked out. I I was talking to a friend of mine who actually was part of a, a new chain of cannabis dispensaries down in, in Massachusetts that opened their first store during pandemic. And I was talking to him and he said he was talking about some customer that he had had a run in with. And, and then it, it turned around. And I said, man, I found that a conflict if resolved can be the shortcut to trust. And like that, right? Because it is, you know, you, you, you want to be careful not to rely on that too much. And certainly you don't want to employ it as a tactic because, th- yeah, because oh yeah, right, that right. that will that will almost certainly backfire. But it will happen that you will find yourself in conflicts with your customers, with your employees. These things happen, and if you can work it out, man, then now you, you know you'll trust each other for the rest of your lives. It's great. Yeah, yeah. And I'll I'll, I'll take that a, another direction. I'm going to talk about suppliers. Uh, and and transparency. And one of my comments on my suppliers uh, section of my notes here is when a supplier makes a mistake, there's your opportunity to really cement a relationship with them. And like if they ship you extra stuff, the best thing you could ever do to make more money with this supplier over the long haul is to call them and tell them that you got this extra shipment or the numbers weren't right. You know, we talk count about building trust. We count our cash at the end of every gig. You know, I'm, I'm a drummer yeah. and I oh, make yeah. it a, a policy. And my policy is count it in front of the person that gave it to you. Right. Because yeah, yeah, that way, if it's yeah. short, you never, you didn't leave and pocket 20 bucks or, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, there was one night where my, uh, one of the guys in the band went and got paid while we were packing up the rest of the stuff. And he, came back and he's like, oh, I got the money. I'm like, great. Did you count it with Jim? And uh, this is a guy that the club is a place that I had played with different bands for years, but I think it was the first time with this particular band. And he's like, no. And I'm like, count it, please. He's like, yeah, yeah. he counts it. And he's like, hang on. And he counts it again. And I think we were supposed to get, I don't know, 500 bucks. And there was 520. And I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. I'm like, go back, find Jim and give it back to him. Give him the 20 bucks. And that guy to this day still talks about how we, we're yeah. the only band that ever gave him money back. It's like, yep. Yeah, that's cool. Well, yeah, you, it's a it's a powerful thing to do. Uh, look at and, what I know, got for twenty dollars. Yes, right. Yeah, it really works. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you know suppliers that and you know or people that hire you they they want to work with reliable companies, yes. right? And, and that are accountable and they know they can, that are going to follow through. Um, it, it, it's really a powerful way to uh, cement those relationships. A couple, a couple more tips on suppliers. Yeah. And then I have one few more, uh, just a couple things on uh, partners and stuff. Oh, but, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. know, 
I got with time. Suppliers. If our listeners have time, you know, if you yeah. don't have time, hit the pause button and then come back yeah. when you do. It's yeah, totally fine. Yeah, no, this is great stuff. Smart. Yeah. Suppliers, you know, you don't want to make, just like your customers, you don't want to make promises that you can't deliver on, right? And I mean, what I mean by that is don't say you're going to take a certain volume of product, for example, if you know you can't handle it, right? Yeah. yeah. Don't try to make yourself look better. Don't ask for terms that you know you can't meet. If you know you're going to struggle with net 30 terms, you're just better putting on a credit card and fighting the battle with your credit card company yeah. than your really important supplier, right? Yeah. Um, always better to do that. And and I firmly believe that you should start small, you know, with, with new suppliers, just, just do a little bit of business. Mm. So they get, they learn who you are. Don't go in. Oftentimes I had, you know, uh, people that wanted to buy from us that came in talking big, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And I'd say, okay, well, let's just do some business and, and build the relationship. And sometimes the loudest talkers, the people that make the most promises, won't pull the trigger and just even place a small order because they're just trying to convince you that they're so big and important. You should give them a massive discount yeah. or something like that. So I always like to start small. Look, if if I know we're going to have a, a $50,000 a month relationship, let me just spend $5,000, see how the process works. I'll pay your full price. I don't care. You know, let's right, just right. start it. I'm not asking for discounts because you don't even know who I am. But let me get your product, look at it, and we'll, you know, all this kind of stuff. So start small. Um, think of that turtle in the hair. Is it tortoise in a hair? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, story. It, it Over the long run, suppliers, they want, you know, a sure thing. They want, you know, customers that are just going to grow along with them and, and uh, they can be great partners. Um, and lastly... This section I added just as an afterthought, but the more I think about it, it may be the most important. Um, you're going to need a ton of help with your business, you know, and if, if, if you don't think you do, <laughs> listen to what Shannon said again. This time, use the rewind 30 seconds button and listen to that again. You are going yeah, to you, need help with your business. Yeah. Tons, you know, bankers, accountants, lawyers, uh, you know, other advisors, insurance people. I mean, all this kind of stuff, real estate people. They're all the, you're going to have this as your business grows, you're going to build this entire ecosystem around you. Yeah. And it's awesome. It's, it's great. But good partners, the really quality ones and, and advisors, they're only going to be willing to help you if if they really know who you are. They get a transparent picture of you personally yep. and your business, right? You really have to earn their trust. They, If you want to leverage those relationships, and if they don't feel they can trust you, forget it. They're not going to refer you. They're not going to introduce you to other people that could help your business because it's their credibility that's on the line. Yes. Right. That's when they right. Make that referral. Yeah. And, you know, that's why that referral concept is so critically important, to, you know, in, in general with your, how good your business is doing. Um, and, and the same thing with like business partners. If, if you're going to go into business with someone to really attract the best kind of partner, you need to be one of the best. Right. You, you need to hold yourself up and say, like, man, I'm I'm super accountable. Uh, I'm going to make this work and all that kind of stuff. Use the working agreement to flush out the losers that just want to ride on your coattails. Uh, you know, look it up at businessshow.co. You'll see how we- I'll, put, I'll put a link in the show notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it really works. Um, and all your partners should really have a clear and a constantly clear lens on what's going on with your business. And if, and if you're the operating partner or you have a couple of managing partners- if you feel like you can't tell your partner something, and I've been in this position and it sucks, you really, it, I, I always call it an intervention. If you can't tell your partner something or they are not telling you something, it's time for an intervention because it's just going to build into oh, some yeah. nasty, I, festering thing that can be very can be devastating. I had a partnership and you can go back and, and deduce what you like. It was one that ended in a fiery lawsuit uh, with <sighs> someone who told the, it was a multi-person partnership, and they told all of us that uh, we were being too honest. Oh, oh yeah, brutal. Yeah, that's as brutal. soon as I heard that, it was like, yeah. wait a minute, like, yeah, whoa, this is yeah. what is what's going on here? And they were like, well, you know, it, it, it sometimes things are better left unsaid. It's like not amongst business partners. No way. <laughs> no nope. need to talk. Yeah. Nope. Related to your business for sure. For sure. Yeah. Related to business. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 No. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yes. Right. But that. No. That's you a fair. Talk it out. Yeah. You got to be able to talk things out. Like yeah, if absolutely. if you think I'm Not making a mistake, you need to. 
I, I need to be the first one you tell. Yeah. And, and that needs yeah. to be okay it's, between us. And no matter how uncomfortable it is. Correct. If you, it's just a no, like a normal relationship. If you just keep swallowing it down or they do, boy, that's, it's, it's bad news. It's really um, bad news. Yeah. And, and, you know, good partners, good advisors, whether it's, like I said, your banker, whether it's an outside, you know, someone that you've hired to help you. These people that you're looking for, they've been down this road. They've seen this movie before, right? They know <laughs> small businesses. So if you come in thinking you're going to fast talk them and there's a lot of BS involved, they sniff that stuff out quickly. Yeah. Be upfront and just like to your employees, explain what you're good at and talk about your weaknesses. And, you know, it, they want to help you. That's the whole reason to have their relationship and don't overshadow uh, or leave out what you're not good at, why you're, you know, reaching out to them in the first place. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the whole concept. So that's the whole, that's the whole point. Yeah, exactly. That's my take at transparency. I wish I was better at it. And like I said, off when I, when I really break it down and read all these notes, it was my defiant optimism has hurt my ability to be as transparent as I would like. Um, and when, I, if I trace back on failures in my business career, even with my partners, not, well, I don't want to talk about that because the sales aren't good or whatever. I'm always a sales guy. Yeah. And I could, I could just remember, and I remember having a partner pull me aside and go, Hey, you know what? It's okay, man. You know, you have to tell me when things aren't going well. Yeah. And it's not a reflection on you personally. Well, maybe it is, but yeah, it <laughs> might know, be, I mean, might, and but, that, you kind of have to okay. be okay yeah. with that too. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I would love to hear some more tips on transparency from you guys listening uh, at home or at the office or in your car, wherever you're at. Um, feedback at businessshow.co, or if you have a minute, come post in the uh, small business support group at businessshow.co slash Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. This was great. I like, uh, I like being transparent about transparency, and I endeavor to be even better about it. So. <laughs> That's how it is. Folks, thanks so much for listening. Thanks for checking out our sponsor at shopify.com slash SBS. And make sure to, uh, you know, send us that email with the things you want us to go through. Feedback at businessshow.co. Keep living that charmed life. See you next week. Hey.